Hello, in this video we're going to work with action filters in an ASP.NET application using C Sharp. So here's what our action filter is going to do for us. We're going to authorize a secret page that can only be seen by people who are logged in. I'll give you a demonstration. So I'm going to log in to this page called private. You can see as I attempt to type in the word private, every time I press enter, it automatically routes me back to a login page. Well, what happens if I actually log in? So I'm going to take a valid user in my system and log in. And let's see if I can get a user. So I have a now successful login. Now I'm going to reattempt at this password, or I'm sorry, at this private section. So private again. And this time, instead of routing me to login, I get a page that says I'm in private. Only people who have logged in can see me. So this will be a real simple page that we're hiding, but you can imagine that a more complex page such as can you check out an order, can you add or delete a user, or any other kind of function that would require authorization first is what we're going to create. So the point here is that these filters can protect pages from unauthorized users. So let's talk for a minute about what action filters are designed to do. So action filters are used to implement some kind of a decision or a logic program between events. For example, in a controller you have like an unclick method and then usually that is followed by a return a view method and in between you might do some calculations. Well in addition to the tools that you already know how to use you can include action filters as part of your calculations. So, for example, you want to do it before the uh, controller event, or after, or just before the return view, we can insert these action filters. So, action filters is a common way to perform additional data processing, or tweaking, or manipulating of return values, or you can even cancel a view before it actually happens. And so it's just one more tool that you can use to check on the validity of certain things or to modify things that need to be fixed. So let's think again about this uh, method called onCheckoutClick. So we want to return the total price of a cart, let's say, in an application. Well, before we would allow that calculation to be done, we might want to check to see, is this person logged in? Now, we allowed them to come to the website and start adding things to their cart. But as soon as they check out, we need to have a valid login. And so you might want to check the login status before you actually return the total price. There are several types of action filters that we can work with. So the first example that I just showed you would be an authorization filter. Check to see if somebody's logged in before we do anything. We can also do a results filter, which means check to see if the results need to be modified a little bit. Exception filters would be used for checking for errors to make sure that your page just doesn't crash. And then finally, a custom filter is what we're going to design, which allows you to use any combination of the first three. So let's talk about an authorization filter. That's the example that I gave you in just a second ago. So authorization filters are used to check to see if a person has logged in. And these can be checked before or after a page is shown. And so check the login status before you return a total price. The second category of filters is the results filter. So it contains logic that is executed before and after a view is displayed. For example, you might want to modify the view result just before it is rendered to the browser. And in this example, you can see there's a method called onDisplayItem. And we want to calculate some property of that item. And then just before we throw it onto the view, we've modified it in some way. So maybe we've uh, changed a value, we've checked on taxes, we've done some kind of a tweak to the, uh, the name. You can imagine anything that you could program to check for a, an item status before it's displayed. You can handle errors here in this filter. You might verify things. So you can log things, you can fix them before they're sent to the screen, or display a message gracefully to the user before you actually crash the program. A custom filter is of your own creation. So if none of the first three are fitting your design exactly, you can build your own. So we are going to create a custom filter and demonstrate it here in this activity because 
we have somewhat of a custom authorization system. We didn't follow the usual ASP.NET authorization, and so we're going to use a custom filter. Custom filters are not hard, they just have to be programmed and you get all control of how, how they work. So in the example that we're going to create now, I have this uh, application that we built in a previous tutorial where we have a login page. And then once we have a successful login, I'm going to then try to route to this page called private. And then it says, yes, you can see this because you have been logged in. And if you haven't been logged in, it'll automatically route you back to the login page. So let's code this and see if we can learn a few things about action filters. So let's take a look at the code as it stands here. So I'm using a project called Activity3, which we did in a previous video. This contains a login controller. So let's review what we have here. So I created this controller called Login Controller. In a previous tutorial, we created a security service, and it would check to see, is this person authenticated? It returned a Boolean value, true or false, and if it comes back as true, then we send a login success view, and if it's a failed login, then we tell the user it didn't work. And so if you want to see how this was built, go back to a previous video. I'll, I'll create a link for you in case you can't find it. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a route and then a possible secure place that only logged in people can see. So let's go look at the route config area, and let's uh, modify a few things. So I'm going to modify the URL for login so that it doesn't have the little curly brackets. So the private URL that I'm going to create will be named private. The URL will be the word private, so it'll be slash private. And then the action in my login controller is going to be called on private URL. So now in the login controller, I'm going to create a new method. So let's call it uh, on private URL. Now inside of here, I'm going to return content, which is just a string. And so the message will say private information here. Only logged in users should be able to see this message. So the first time we run this, we'll be able to see it easily. And then perhaps in the next video, we'll create the uh, authorization filter so that only the logged in people can see it. Okay, so it looks like the app can run now. Let's uh, test it out. So I'm gonna get the app up and running and then I'm going to change the URL to slash private. And sure enough, we get the message that says private information here. Only logged in users should be able to see this message. So obviously we haven't logged in, this is not protected yet, but we are set up now where we can have a filter. And so we'll create the filter in the next part. 